110 episodes later. You've seen this cartridge sitting in the back. You knew we were going to finally talk about Superman 64 at some point. Today's that epic day. Are you an everyday nerd? Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next episode. Yo, welcome to Everyday Nerd. I'm your host, Zach Snyder. Today's Phil's by Friday. Happy Friday. If you're new around here on Fridays, we take a look at some of the worst things of all time. And as you can see, I'm pretty excited today. When we think about the worst games of all time, one of the first games that comes to mind everybody is Superman 64. It can be argued that there are much worse games out there, and yet Superman 64 is considered the magnum opus of worst games. I first played Superman 64 about seven years ago, and I immediately fell in love. I mean, it's such a simplistic game with so many issues, and yet for some reason it's just kind of fun to play. Flying through rings isn't the worst thing you could do. In fact, I would argue that Superman 64 is basically Sonic the Hedgehog. I'm, I'm just, just saying. Fast forward a few years, I get the Nintendo Switch on release date. I only really had Breath of the Wild to play and I was doing that mostly on streams. So I was playing some Puyo Puyo Tetris and that was fun, but I wanted to branch out. I wanted to see what else was available on the release date of the Switch. And there it was. I was pleasantly surprised to see that for only $9.99, I could get the very thing I had ever wanted, a Superman 64 remaster on the go. This <laughs> is room in the night sky. We're not talking about Superman 64 yet. No, 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 no. You just got pranked, bitch. anything about it, which I'm assuming most people do not, 2017's Room in the Night Sky is a magical bike action game. It says so on the eShop right here. It features fantastic feeling, speedy feely, and realistic feeling using HD vibration. There are various night skies in the world and it is the work of the magical to collect stardusts. Not the stardust from Pokemon Go, no, but the stardust in the sky that you collect as a magical girl, Luna while flying a magical bike in the night sky. Vroom in the Night Sky is quite possibly the worst game I've ever played. It is worse than Superman 64. Look, I know I joke about Superman 64 a good bit, especially if you've been around for a few years in the Zack Snyder Productions community, but I'm still gonna do an episode about Superman 64. I just need something. I gotta build up to that. That's gonna be the pinnacle of the show. And then after that, everything else I'm gonna do is probably not gonna be worth it. I wanna make like a two hour documentary about Superman 64. But before that, uh, I saw this game on the eShop two years ago and I thought it'd be funny if I got it. Unfortunately, it's not funny because it cost me $10. I don't know why I bought this. I am still incredibly sad because just like Fallout 76, I would have like $10 more to my name. So Room in the Night Sky, I really couldn't tell you a whole lot about the story, but I'm gonna try. You play as Magical Girl Luna as you attempt to open a portal known as the Magical Gate. Other characters in the game include a flying creature and an evil witch. I'm actually gonna have to play more of this game. Thanks, Wikipedia. So like, this story is pretty hard to explain in general because of the very poor translation of the original Japanese version. The translation is so awful that I wouldn't be surprised if they had a Japanese person try to translate the game into English and then got another Japanese person that also didn't know English try to read that script into Google Translator and then they use that as the basis of the game script. Even with its bad translation, there's just not a whole lot of story here. For instance, check out this engaging dialogue. Star sticking out from behind the tree. Really? There might be a Stardust. I want to ride to another magical bike. Collect Stardust. The magical gate is open. Give me five. Ha 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 ha. Sand, sand, sand. This is the desert. I don't like sand. Is here a camel there? 
I've never seen here. Tut! What? What the f <laughs> does Tut mean? But Zach, we don't play a game for its story. We play it for its gameplay. Cool. Well, I hope you like going through rings. Now I'll give Vroom a positive. It's definitely easier to control the bike here than controlling my boy Superman in Superman 64. However, at least there was some variety in Superman 64. I'm not saying that variety was good. I'm not saying that the mini games were at all quality. I'm saying that at least there was some variety. In Vroom, all you literally do is go through rings and collect stardusts. Not star dust. I know I burped there. I don't care. Star dusts, plural, a word that does not exist. You collect the stardust, you go through rings, you upgrade your bike, you collect more stardust, you go through rings, you upgrade your bike, you collect more stardust, you go through rings, you upgrade your bike, you collect more stardust, you upgrade more rings, you go through, you upgrade a new bike. Collect more stardust, go through more rings, upgrade your bike. You collect more stardust, go through more rings, upgrade your bikes. You collect more stardust, upgrade your rings, collect more bikes. You upgrade your stardust, collect more rings, upgrade your bikes. You collect more stardust, upgrade more rings, collect more bikes. You go through stardust, collect more rings, upgrade more bikes. You collect more stardust. This gameplay is boring, it's repetitive, and worst of all, it's just easy. Like, this is a baby game for little babies. There's no reason that this should have been $10. Honestly, I, I need to figure out how Nintendo's gonna give me my money back because, man, it's like, I don't know. Like, there's also the fact that every level almost looks identical. Like, the title does not lie. This is Night Sky. You're, you're really going vroom vroom in the night sky. But like, I played at least 30 minutes of this, probably more, honestly. And I would have thought that I would have seen some more variety because I went through a lot of levels. But it is just all night sky. That's it. Going beyond just the gameplay, the sound design is incredibly just not good. The music is just mostly boring and repetitive. I think it's also kind of funny that the only thing that even remotely is developed in this game is the bike variety. Like this is technically considered a racing game. They give you a bunch of different bikes to use. I can't really comment on how good any of them are because I mostly just didn't care. But I guess this is a positive. I mean, this really isn't even a racing game at all. Like I can't play against my friends. There's no racetrack. You never actually race against other character. At least I don't think you do. You're just flying in the sky against a timer that's usually got way too much time on it anyway. So like, you're not really racing the clock. It's just not engaging. It's not fun. It's not worth my $10. I'm sad that I've had this on my Switch for two and a half years. Why is there an ad playing on the YouTube video of the gameplay? You know what? Go check out Google Stadia, everybody. This, this video is now sponsored by Google Stadia. You pre-ordered the Stadia Founders Edition. I'm glad somebody's making money off of this because I'm not. Anyways, I'm done. Thank you for watching this video. This is the last episode of Your Everyday Nerd. Bitches, I'm out. Peace. I'm, I'm about to head out. I'm about to head out. I'm SpongeBob and that one me. Peace. Yeah, there's money all around me. I just play like the man. Yeah, there's money all around.